Okay, now we're getting into solving logarithmic equations. So here's the first two examples we're going to look at. All the problems in this section that deal with logs, what you want to do is, if you have a single log already there, you want to change it from log form into exponential. Once it's in exponential form, it's going to be a lot easier to solve. So for this one, we want to change it from log form to exponential. We talked about this before in a previous section. What you do is you take the, this, this number here, the base, you're going to raise it to the number after the equal sign, and then it's going to equal whatever you have left over. So how this would work is you have a 5, that's raised to the number after the equal sign, 5 squared, that's going to equal 4x plus 5. So now I want to solve that for x. We have no more logs, we turn it into an exponent, so you're just going to solve it like normal equations you've done before. 5 squared is 25, and then we get 4x plus 5. And then we're going to solve this one for x. We subtract 5 from both sides, you get 20 is equal to 4x, divide both sides by 4, and we get 5 as our answer. So 5 would answer the first one. Whenever you do log equations, it's very, very important. Make sure you check your answer in the original one to make sure you don't get a negative number inside. We know that we're not allowed to take the log of a negative number. Now, does this mean that your x can't be negative? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that when you put the answer into the, the expression inside the parentheses, you don't want to get a negative or a zero. If I put 5 back in here, I get 25 inside there. That's perfectly fine. I'm not taking log of negative number, so therefore that would be my single answer. But you want to get in the habit of any kind of log equation that you do. Make sure you check the answer, put it back into the original one to make sure you don't get a negative number or a zero. Because if you do, we have to actually cross out that answer. It's not allowed, not in your domain. Let's do this one the same way. We're going to change this into exponential form. You take the base, one half, raise it to the third power, number after the equal sign, that's going to equal 3x minus 7. Okay, when we cube this one, we're going to get 1 over 8 to cube the top number and cube the bottom number, that's going to equal 3x minus 7. And now I want to solve this for x. If we got a, a problem with a fraction here, the best way to do that is multiply by the LCD, least common denominator, and if you multiply both sides by that, that would cancel this fraction out. So I have 8 times 1 over 8, that's 1. Don't forget to multiply this side by 8 also. You get 24x minus 56. Then we want to solve for x, we're going to add 56 over to both sides. And if you add 56 here and add 56 there, you're going to get 57 equals 24x. So when I have 57 equals 24x, I want to divide both sides by 24. My answer is going to be 57 over 24. Um, I can get a decimal equivalent for this one, put it in here. If I were to check this one by putting this back into there, 3 times this number would be positive, minus 7 would still give you a positive number because this result here uh, would be roughly, we know that 48 over 24 is about 2, so it's going to be a little bit more than 2. And so if I multiply by, th by uh, 3, that's still going to work there. So it means that this would be your uh, final answer for that one, 57 over 24.